Um, fantastic. And uh, Nicole, fantastic. Um, yep, great. Uh, fantastic. Love it. Um, and uh, Josh, absolutely right. And living in separate households. I know there's so many of us. And by the way, you guys will hear me reading this out because the way it's set up right now is that the messages just come directly to us. So welcome. Why don't we get right into it? And uh, I invite you to turn this into a little retreat for yourself. Uh, let's spend the next little while. And uh, yes, welcome, welcome. So wonderful to see all of your messages. Great your messages, just letting us know who you are. So it's great. We've got a real range of uh, some folks with disabilities who are here. Welcome. We've got some caregivers here. Welcome. Just so great to have all of you. So as we settle in, why don't we do two different meditations today? Why don't we do one to get us settled and just arrive in the present moment? Because as we know, mindfulness is about coming to the present moment, right? Because guess what happens when we focus on the present moment? We're not getting lost in the past or pulled into the future. Those are the places where we get into trouble. Um, there's a funny saying um, that, uh, that, you know, they talk about neighborhoods, dangerous neighborhoods. I've heard some Buddhist teachers say, I wouldn't want to go into my mind alone in the dark. It's a very dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> right? So sometimes our thoughts, our thoughts are one of the most dangerous things, right? And as we're all saying with this pandemic, um, someone sent me a CBC article saying that, you know, 50% of people are saying that they're having mental health, um, their mental health conditions worsening during the pandemic. So and those are all thought based, right? There's so many stressors, as we said, some of you mentioned in your messages uh, um, just now, I'm separated from my loved one. Um, we're in separate households and we know very well, uh, many of us who are living under small, small little housing like I'm in um, with my son. So it's tight quarters, so it's not easy. But there's so many others who have loved ones who are in group homes where we're hearing that there's some positive testing for COVID-19 and uh, just all around the map. It's a, it's a situation um, that can really use some love and compassion. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay. Um, so in settling in, why don't we start off with sort of an arriving meditation? And if anybody's new here, I just want to remind everyone that mindfulness is a range of tools. Okay. There's all kinds of different tools and each one is going to click with a different person in a different way. So we're going to offer you a number of different practices. You might not, not like all of them and uh, one or two of them might really click with you. If there's something that you don't click with, it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It simply means there might be another one that's better for you at this time. And uh, the research that we've been doing with autistic adults in particular, uh, we have advisors telling us, like autistic advisors who are part of our groups who help us learn how to do it better. And we keep learning that everyone needs a different kind of practice. Okay, so uh, don't worry, we're not gonna force you to sit like a pretzel and focus on your navel or something because that doesn't work for everybody. So why don't you come into a position in which you're relatively comfortable to pay attention? Okay. So what's that position position for you? Is it sitting upright, a little bit more straight? Is it relaxing? Do you feel tense already? Do you need to relax yourself a little more? The traditional mindfulness instructions are generally speaking to have the spine and the neck and the head all in a straight line as much as you can. But it's kind of funny. We don't want to be stiff like uncooked spaghetti, right? So we want to just be in a relatively straight line. And that's not rocket science. It's only so that we can focus a little better. Okay. So what we want to do is develop what we call a relaxed alertness. So try getting in that position now 
If you're on a chair, you may want to have the feet flat on the ground. And let's begin with just tensing and releasing. So I want you just to tense your muscles up and release them a couple of times, okay? So just take all your muscles, your face, your arms, your fists, your whole torso, buttocks, legs, tighten and release. And when you release, see if you can really get curious about the physical feeling in the body of what it's like to relax. So I want you just to do that tense and release three more times. But when you release, just relax and take a couple of deep breaths, okay? So really feeling the releasing. So tensing up, feeling the body, the fists, the face, the whole body, and fully release. And after you release, just feel the body breathing. Can you feel the breath in the belly? You feel the body relaxing. Once again, tensing up, tightening all the muscles. If there's muscles that you haven't tightened yet, get to them and fully release, relax, and let go. One more time, tensing and fully releasing. Now let's just turn our attention to the breath, okay? So there's a couple different ways we can do this. And I see that we have many friends who are coming back who have been here a few times. If you have already found the breathing technique that really works for you, please start doing that now and just bring all your attention to staying focused on that one anchor point. And what I mean by anchor point is just the thing that we're keeping as the object of our focused attention. So rather than wandering around with our attention, just bring it to one object. So there's several ways we can do that with our breath. For those of you who are new, I'll offer you a couple. Feel free, if you like, to take a hand, place it on your chest, place another one on your belly, and just pay attention to the rising and falling of your breath. See how when you breathe in, it balloons out, and when you breathe out, it relaxes back down, just like an ocean tide. So let's take a few breaths, if you'd like to focus on that, and see if you can feel the warmth of your hands resting on your body, caring for you, soothing you, looking after you. And as you breathe in and out, just let the hands just ride on the waves of the ocean as the breath goes in and out. So breathing in, Hands moving up, breathing out, hands relax back down. So bring your full attention to that just for the next few breaths, staying with the present moment, just feeling sensations of the body breathing in, breathing out in the chest and the belly. Now what I want you to do is just start breathing a little bit more deeply so that you can actually hear the sound of your breath. And then I want you to switch the anchor over to the sound. So try doing that. If it's difficult for you to start breathing to the point where you can hear it, try doing this first. Just breathe out on your hand, like you're fogging up your glasses. And now keep breathing out and breathing in again. Now close your mouth and do the same thing. And 
Now let that go into that slow rhythm. So breathing nice and loud, ocean breath, focusing so that the sound is just like the sound of the ocean. Moving in, moving out. Wonderful. And it's kind of fun if you enjoy it to imagine that as you breathe in with the ocean tide, that you're being healed and filled with this wave of compassion. And as you breathe out, anything that you don't need just rolls out with the tide, heads out into the ocean. It'll be fun using sound. So, why don't we try doing that a few more times? But what I want you to do now is practice being your own expert. What's the best focus for you, the sound or the sensation of the chest or the belly, or just that imagery of breathing in compassion and breathing out what you don't need with the tide. So I want you to just choose one of those things and bring your full attention and this is where we're practicing wiring the brain. The more we do this, the more the brain gets stronger at being present and calm. So we're wiring our brain to be in the present moment. So choose one of those, either the sound or the feeling of the belly rising, falling, or just that image of breathing in compassion and breathing out something you don't need. Okay, give that a shot for three to five breaths. Let's go. And for the next breath or so, the final breaths of this, see if you can really feel the whole body relaxing when you breathe out in the same way that we were able to feel our bodies relaxing when we did the tense and release. Now, see if you can really feel the body letting go, getting heavier on the exhalation. Try that just once or twice. Wonderful. So there's a little bit of um, we call ocean breathing, right? The uh, the ocean tide kind of helps us remember that our breath is kind of like the ocean tide in that one breath might be long, one breath might be short. In the same way, each wave of the ocean is slightly different. And the neat thing is, as all beings on this planet, all people, no matter who they are, no matter if we love them or if they irk us a little bit, we're all breathing. We're all tuned into the same rhythm of the breath, right? All around the world. So breathing can be a wonderful way of calming because it's also helping us tap into the vagus nerve, that wonderful nerve that goes around the belly that gets stimulated when we breathe in deeply. So we always say this to caregivers, every single breath is an opportunity to let go, right? Every out breath, you can just relax. Even if you're stressed to the max, you're there with your family tripping over you in your small home, every out breath is a chance to relax. So you can just remind yourself of that. 
And uh, before we end today, uh, I'm going to ask Lee. Lee has such a beautiful way of talking about um, um, breath being a new beginning. So Lee, later on, before we end, I'm going to ask you to say some of your beautiful words about that. Um, let's do just a couple more quick breaths. Uh, we've done some of these before with you for anybody who likes more concrete things. See, as we're saying, there's tons of different mindfulness ways of focusing on one object in the breath. So why don't we do our little square breathing, okay? So I'd like you just to draw a little square with your finger, okay? So just draw a little square in the air. There we go. So we got that, okay? So now that we're familiar with what we're going to do with our finger, now what I'd like you to do is breathe in unison with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in. How about we breathe in going up, breathe in. Now hold your breath going across the top. Now breathe out and breathe out through the mouth this time like a birthday candle. Hold your breath. Going across the bottom and then breathing back in. So it's just a square. Breathe in going up. Hold the breath out through the mouth like a birthday candle. Hold the breath and breathe in. Hold. Breathe out through the mouth. Hold. So try that a few times, okay? Breathing in. Hold the breath out like a birthday candle. Hold the breath. Breathing in. Hold the breath out through the mouth. Hold the breath. Try that once or twice on your own, okay? So there's another little tool that can be useful. That one can be useful. And a lot of people tell us that if they're having anxiety, then in the moment that they're having anxiety, they can kind of try stopping it in their tracks by doing that. So feel free to pull that one out if you need to. Um, and uh, in case anybody's new here and hasn't seen our Lotus breathing, it's a real easy one. Um, take your hand and open it up like a beautiful day lily. And then close it like the lily closes at night when the sun goes down. So as the sun comes up, just like it is today, it opens wide and then closes. And now try breathing in unison. So even if you've done this a million times and you're like, oh, I've done lotus breathing, I'm an expert at that. Try coming to it as though you're a beginner, doing it for the first time. And here's an additional tip to help you focus. See if you can really tie in the pinpoint of the beginning of the breath with the opening and then the end of the breath with the closing and then the beginning. So pay attention to beginnings and ends of the in-breath, the out-breath and the pause in the middle. Okay, that's an additional little advanced tip for any breathing technique, focusing on the beginnings and endings and really almost being like a, a guard watching the breath go in and out and so you're just witnessing or observing it so let's give that a shot okay ready lotus breathing breathing in breathing out try that for three to five breaths on your own Wonderful, great stuff. And feel free to just add in the chat function of all of these things uh, that we've done. We've done ocean breathing with sound, lotus breathing, tense and relaxing, ocean breath, just using the imagery of the ocean. Feel free to type in the chat function, which one was the most relaxing for you? Feel free, just type that in. It's interesting to hear 
And I think Lee and Bree would probably agree with me. The really cool thing is, like, don't you guys notice this? Most of the time it's different for everybody. And, um, and remember that if these techniques aren't clicking with you, there's tons of other techniques that might click better. Yep, the ocean breathing, some are saying, yep. Thanks for entering these in, folks. It's great. We have a walking meditation. And the lotus one today, I like how Joel's saying, I like the lotus one today. And Joel, are there other days that other techniques work better for you? Um, because that's another great observation that not every day, yep. And the, the figure eight one works too, yep. Great. And uh, Lotus and square breathing for Dan and uh, Lauren saying the motion one with the sound. Yep. And the ocean meditating. Okay. So it, Lauren likes all of them. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we do have just so many different practices. I remember one woman who did the program with us said, I love all these practices, but she said, you know what I'm going to be doing every single day is walking up stairs. So believe it or not, this woman, uh, apparently where she worked, there's a long staircase uh, in the entranceway to her work. That became her daily meditation. So I loved how she took the practices and made them her own. And she would just count rhythmically, breathing in two steps, breathing out two steps. And that was her thing. And it was an entranceway. And here's another thing, caregivers, you might like this one. Um, you know, we're talking about finding a way of being with the pandemic and turning it into a practice for us. And it's challenging. How can we take this time and really give ourselves an opportunity to kind of rewire, right? It's almost like a reset button for the earth. Lee was talking beautifully about how the trees and the birds are still singing away. Lee was talking about hearing more robins than ever before. And for ourselves, how can we also reset, right? Just like that woman walked up the stairs as a meditation. Um, every time you go through a doorway or an entranceway in your own home, that can be an opportunity to do a couple of deep breaths. Right, we've got um, guided meditations. You can go and and find them. An easy place you can start. We've got links to today's thing and to tune in Tuesday's thing and our just three breaths. Um, I'm sure we're going to link them, and I think we are developing in our research more and more resources to send out. Um, but an easy place to also just go suhuttonmindfulness.com. We've got the tune in Tuesday link there, the mindful Monday, and also the just three breaths. And you can do that just three breaths through every single doorway, right? Just doing three ocean breaths, every doorway that you go through, unless your entire house is open concept, uh, <laughs> then, then you can find your own way of doing that. Um, but I uh, just love how all of you who were uh, sending us those messages, Everyone had a different thing they liked best. So that's great. Okay, I'm going to prepare to do um, another practice, which is um, this, the trees and all of the nature imagery um, combined with self-compassion, okay? Um, and um, Lee, do you wanna say a couple words now before we start the practice, just about your beautiful way of saying every breath is an opportunity. You know, you describe it so beautifully. Do you want to, do you want to take a moment now? Sure, Sue. I guess just, um, you know, I, there's, I've always spent a lot of time either thinking about what I have done in the past or I'm projecting into the future and, and I, I guess what the gift of mindfulness to me has been that, you know, I can't change the past or really, you know, and what I kind of, how I get grounded to today can affect my future, but this is really the reality that I do have is just this moment. And, and so even if I have blown it, like, you know, this morning and got frustrated or whatever, you know, I can just start again with a new breath. And I just, I love the metaphor that, you know, 
the breath is like an anchor. It can keep me grounded. And it just seems so simple in some ways. Like, you know, I, the simplicity of mindfulness on one level is just that every breath is a new beginning. And yet it isn't simple because it's a real invitation to notice, an invitation to slow down and notice what's happening inside me, what's troubling me, if I'm holding pain somewhere or frustration in my body. And I just think up until learning a little bit about mindfulness, I was probably always running from those thoughts and feelings and emotions. But the more that I do mindfulness, the more I realize that that's actually not a frightening place to go to at all. It's actually where I can really get, you know, start again and, and great, great compassion to myself that, hey, yeah, this is this next breath is a new beginning. I can reset, start again right now. See, Lee always puts these things so well. And and um, and I think the whole reset concept, I've heard of so many parents reaching out and saying, oh my God, Sue, you won't believe what just happened with my daughter. I'm the worst parent in the world. I lost an honor. She did this, this, and this. I said, no, 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 no. Don't be hard on yourself. Everyone, I think every single family is having a struggle right now friend of mine said to me yesterday, if anyone's telling you that everything's going swimmingly, they're lying. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's a, this is a real situation um, for anyone. And again, like we said, just either you're, you know, crawling on top of each other in a small environment or your loved ones somewhere else. So it's be gentle with yourself, I think is the most important thing. And Lee, you've talked a lot about, um, uh, a lot about the guilt that parents right and how important it is to let go so we're about to do a practice now where we really look at this and um absolutely and i see it here i love it i just saw your message um and right thank you joel we just had somebody say you know what i'm not a parent and i feel guilt so you got it right right absolutely and the funny thing is so many of those things for caregivers it's for all of us, right? So thank you so much for sharing that. I know guilt is a universal thing, isn't it? So we're gonna do a practice to really take a look at all that stuff and help ourselves kind of reset. After we finish this group, we're probably gonna go and hear what uh, the Ontario government has just said about uh, opening back up. So let's kind of prepare with the attitude of, I'm gonna nurture myself and do all the work I can to be the best person to take care of myself in the best way for when we come out of this uh, this whole pandemic piece. Thank you so much for sharing. You guys are sharing amazing things. We certainly do have a group on disabilities. I see this other message um, that came in. Yeah, tune in Tuesdays and maybe Bree can say a couple words about that at the end of our group today. Absolutely, and it's a lot of fun. Um, Okay, let's get in position and we're going to do a bit of a meditation right now on being kind to ourselves, being gentle, as we're saying, some of you are sharing with us about the guilt and uh, let's take a chance to just really go easy on ourselves, be compassionate, and uh, we'll do it with a bit of nature imagery. So, get into that position where you can pay attention being gentle and um, so feel free to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Some people like to close their eyes and some people really don't com feel comfortable. If you do not feel comfortable, then all you do is you just keep your eyes open, but just look down at one spot. And the reason that we do that is because when we're looking down at one spot, we actually are not uh, getting distracted with looking all around, right? Um, so that's the only uh, at one spot. And whenever we start a meditation, it can be useful to once again, just deep breath, just to focus ourselves back. Feel free to deepen the breath now for a few breaths and feeling same sensations you were just noticing earlier, focusing on the breath. And whichever of those breath practices helps you. Is it the breath practice of hearing the sound of your breathing going in and out like the ocean tide? Or is it that practice of 
moving the hand like a lotus opening and closing or just feeling the belly rising and falling. I'm going to start off and I'm going to read a poem by a poet called Mary Oliver. And just listen to these words. If that helps you get into the, the feeling, the spirit of nature, it will be that we'll be kind of exploring in this meditation. This poem's called When I Am Among the Trees. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locust, equally the beech, the oaks, and the pines. They give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say that they save me. And daily, I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and I have discernment and I never hurry through the world. But I walk slowly and I bow often. Around me, the trees stir in their leaves and they call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches and they call again. It's simple, they say. And you too have come into the world to do this. Go easy, be filled with light and shine. With those words, let's continue with that breathing in and out. And I want you now just to bring your attention to an image. Just imagine you can remember a time that you've done this, or you can just have fun with your imagination. Remember, with mindfulness, some of us may imagine things and see them more clearly. And others of us may just feel the direct sensations. So you're the expert. Just work with whatever connects with you and helps you stay focused and not get lost in thought. So I want you just to imagine you're walking down a beautiful path in nature. And feel your feet as they touch the earth, step by step. By step. You may be in bare feet or shoes, whatever's comfortable for you. And just feel yourself walking on your own and preparing to do some very deep healing just for you. You've got some time that is all yours. You're not in a rush. Just totally looking forward to taking good care of yourself as you walk down this path. Feel the sun as it's shining just perfectly. Feel what the sensations are like, what the sounds are like in the trees, the environment around you, what the smells like. Can you smell pine? Is there a water? Or a river nearby. Just create either a memory of a place you've been or just walk into the perfect healing natural environment for you. I want you to take a few more steps and enter into a place where you feel like you can rest. It may be within a magical forest, maybe in a field, whatever really connects for you. Come into this place and you'll see that this environment is just for your own healing. Feeling the sensations and the sounds as you walk in. And you'll notice a little clearing that is perfect with your name on it, where it's as though the earth has this special seat specifically to support you healing and relaxing and take a seat there now it may be mossy it may be 
earthen, it may be pine boughs, whatever it is, it's made just for you at the seat of the most amazing, powerful healing tree in the forest. Feel yourself fully relax. And what are the sensations like? Just perfectly supporting you exactly as you need to be supported. Now, just take a few deep breaths, feeling your body connecting with that healing of the earth. Feeling the body breathing deeply in the belly. And as you breathe out, feel yourself connecting deeply with the earth and the roots going way down deep into the earth. As you breathe back in, you may even feel as though you're breathing in nutrients from the roots. I want you now to feel the light in the air all around you in this beautiful healing environment. And feel it as it's caressing your skin, your face. Notice that this entire environment is here for your healing. And as you breathe, you can feel your whole body receiving this. The light that's filtering down through the leaves is coming in at just the perfect, brilliant radiance to heal you. Just as all the trees are gathered around providing the perfect amount of shelter, warmth, safety, and protection for you to let go and relax and heal, to be fully supported. Feel as you breathe in and out this pristine air entering the body, whole body being supported and healed. You may feel all the cells, all the different parts of your body being nurtured and taken care of. Feeling yourself relaxing even more deeply now as you breathe out and the whole body feels even more supported, nurtured, and healed. Now as you breathe in, I want you to feel all of this beautiful healing in this forest, the sunlight, the leaves, you may hear birds in the trees, that soft, soothing whisper of the wind in the leaves, all for you. Allow that all to filter in, infuse into your body. And feel where it gathers. Where do you feel sensations in your body where that gathers? Maybe in the face, the throat, the heart, the belly. Just feeling that sense of radiant healing entering the body. I want you now to bring your full attention to those sensations in the body. Feeling as you're protected, you've got a light of protection all around you now. Now you can bring your full attention to the body's healing within. What sensations do you notice now? As though there's this beautiful, wonderful environment that you're in is now inside the heart of your body healing.
And if it feels right to you, you may even bring to mind something that you've wanted to work on to heal a part of your life that feels a need, a calling for some healing. And allow that to come and rest in the center of this healing light right now. Feeling the body softening, the face being soothed, relaxing. As we're just tending to ourselves, tending to that which calls for healing right now. Fully supported. Now just return to that feeling of being bathed in this healing natural environment, all for you, breathing in and out and feeling where that healing rests in the body. This magical natural environment that is all for you. Just gathering that, feeling that in the body. There may be a feeling of happiness, of light, might feel like a little ball of light that's just somewhere inside the body. Just feeling that tucked away for you at all times. Deepening our breath once again and feeling our seat on the earth. Feeling our connection deep down with the earth being grounded. And then you may also have a feeling of rising majestically up with the tree. That spirit of growth within us. And that feeling of power, grounded, balanced. And then listening once again, you may hear the wind in the trees that soft healing whisper of the breeze. There may be birds singing, again, all for you. Feeling your connection with all of nature. Feeling your seat once again, what does it feel like, that natural seat that you're on right now? Feeling free to stretch your hands a little bit and just preparing to bring this healing with you back into your life. And slowly getting up, stretching, looking around the environment once again, knowing that this is a place you have to come back to anytime. And then slowly making your way back out along the forest, heading back to the pathway, feeling your feet on the ground, and now resonating with that person inside of you, that healing, that presence. Slowly walking. And then heading out along that pathway once again, feeling the light. Feeling the earth and then just returning. Let's just bring our awareness back to deepening the breath in and out a few times. And if you still have that sensation of that little healing presence in the body, feel free to even breathe in and out with that. Either breathe in and out through the nostrils, through the belly, or if there's sensation there, you can just. Feel that, imagining you can feel in and out, breathing with that. When you're ready to, you can open your eyes. Just opening your eyes and stretching your body as you would like to stretch. Whatever your body 
needs. Uh, and feel free to leave a couple of words in the chat function, just letting us know what was that like for you? Was it, um, did it work for you to imagine the forest? Was it better for you just to stay with sensations of the breathing? It was nice, good. I'm hearing, uh, seeing some of you refreshing. What a great word for that. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Refreshing, exactly. Absolutely. Very nice. And uh, yep, more people are saying refreshing. I think that that's a great word for that. I feel refreshed too. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn it over to Bree and uh, and then Lee. So can I turn it over, Bree? Somebody was asking. I think perhaps private chatting me just asking about Tune In Tuesdays. Maybe Bree can say a couple words about that and our other programs like our Fit Fridays and all kinds of stuff. And then Lee Lee may have a couple words too. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Well, thank you, Sue. That was lovely. Um, so, yeah, we are running several programs. One is Tune In Tuesday. So, it's exactly like today, um, but it's aimed for people with disabilities. So, if you're interested in signing up for that, I'm going to type in the link here. Um, you can sign in and, or, or sorry, register through that link. And then we also are offering Fit Friday, which I'll type in because I forget the link while Lee's talking so I can go and get it. Um, but that's also kind of like a physical activity session as well as a physical activity lecture um, on Fridays also for people with disabilities. So if you're interested in that. And then we're also running some programs. These ones are for just autistic adults just because of different funding agencies. Um, but we are offering caregiver groups, sorry, caregiver adult groups. So caregivers and adults participate together. Um, and then we're offering a group just for autistic adults. So if you want to learn more about those, please reach out to me. I'm going to put my email in the chat and that's it on my end on to you, Lee. I just love that uh, visualization, Sue. Um, I just was, yeah, I, I think that's what I'm really looking for is to, I can, right now I can walk around a park sort of, but um, that took me deep into the forest and uh, and I love the idea that I, I can carry that healing with me. Um, and so thank you for, for that. And um, that'd be really nice. Deep space, maybe laying on a on a mossy bed on the forest floor, just hearing all the sounds of nature. I just I think nature is so restorative right now, and I I think if we can bring nature into our hearts, just helping when we feel isolated or overwhelmed or anxious or fearful, we can just think about that we're all we're all united together with nature and with each other. That we truly aren't alone. Just get a sense of that. And I think if anything, the gift of COVID right now is slowing me down enough to just notice those things instead of being sort of pulled around by my shoulds. I should be doing this and I should be going here and I should be doing that. It just, uh, it's an invitation to listen to myself, I think. What do I need right now? And check in with myself. Now that would be soothing. Do I need a cup of tea? Do I need a few minutes to myself? Do I need to be grounded? I need to go for a walk and be, hear those little birds and feel the breeze on my face. Like, I think, yeah, this is also also a time to just slow down and, and tune in rather than always be. Um, this, I'm very distracted before COVID. This is kind of a nice time to maybe reset. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, everybody. It's so great to see you. I think it's just at three o'clock and we uh, we do try and honor uh, saying goodbye. So thanks so much, everyone. We will see you again next week. And I guess we're all going to go to hear what Ontario is saying now about coming out of our uh, cocoon and like Lee said, getting out into nature. So I'm oh, so glad you feel better, Chris. Thank you. Hope everybody's feeling a little bit more rejuvenated. And by the way, 
Remember, if the meditations today didn't click with you, make it yours. There's other ways of practicing and we'll do, uh, we'll do different practices again next week. And, uh, and then, of course, we have um, uh, tune in Tuesdays tomorrow. And uh, as Bree was saying, those other programs, Bree's got all the information. So there, there's Bree's email if you want to connect. Thanks so much. Fabulous. And Lauren, I'm so glad. And Joel, so, so glad. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we still need to be practicing social distancing, by the way. Someone just sent me a message. Well, I'm still going to be avoiding people in public. You got it. Social distancing is still on. So that's why let's use these practices. When I said get out, I don't mean tomorrow go <laughs> to a bar. We'll get pulled over by the police. But in our hearts and in our minds, we can do that. So absolutely, social distancing is still a thing. Okay, thanks everyone. So great to see you. Take good care.